Hello guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video I'm gonna discuss about Fiddick Yellow Book 2nd Edition, which was published in 2017. I hope you all know that this book consists of conditions of contract for plant and design build projects. As a construction professional, it is really important to have a sound understanding on Fiddick clauses. When you say conditions, there are two types of conditions. General conditions and particular conditions. First we'll discuss about general conditions. Fiddick Yellow Book 2017 consists of 21 clauses. So I'm hoping to explain everything in this document in a series of videos. So, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon then you can join with me in the future videos as well. Now let's start today's video with Clause number 1, General Provisions. This clause consists of 16 sub-clauses. Let's discuss one by one. Sub-clause 1.1, Definitions. When you're referring to FIDIC documents, you must be very familiar with these defined words. And be mindful that you must use these defined words in your documentation and correspondence exactly the same way as they are written in this book. For example, when you write accepted contract amount, it should be like this and not like this. Work should be like this, not like this. This is really, really important. Okay, now let's go through these definitions. There are 90 definitions altogether, so I'm not gonna describe one by one, and I will skip the straightforward ones. I think it's better to start off with base date, since we will be discussing on advance payment certificate and guarantee under clause 14. So, base date is the date 28 days prior to tender submission date. But, there's a special word, latest, latest date of submission, which means if the tender submission date extended, then the base date automatically changes accordingly. This base date is vital because the contractor shall do the pricing by considering the information, regulations and conditions prevailing at the base date. Also, the rate analysis for the project is prepared with the cost data available at the time of base date. So, the base date is generally used as a mechanism for the allocation of risk between employer and contractor for changes that might occur during the period between the contractor pricing the tender and the signing of the contract. So in general a base date is a reference date from which changes in conditions can be assessed. To explain a little bit further, I'll link this to another definition, unforeseeable. It says unforeseeable means not reasonably foreseeable by an experienced contractor by the base date. So this base date is clearly connected with risks. Okay, so now we'll move on to next definition, claim. This is a very popular term I guess in the construction industry. A claim can be defined as a request or an assertion, which means a confident statement with evidence from either party of the contract to the other for an entitlement which of course is for an additional payment or an extension of time if you are the contractor and if you are the employer a cost reduction may be. Not only that, you can submit a claim for a relief as well. I think this could be a relief from a delay damages or some kind of a penalty. So, you can initiate a claim under various circumstances as described in this document, we will discuss about those under the relevant clauses. For now, I want you to have a quick look at Clause 20.2.4, Fully Detailed Claim. So you should be certain that you have fulfilled all these four requirements when you are submitting a claim. Then I'm gonna talk about Compliance Verification System. However, under definitions, you cannot get a clear idea about it. Therefore, I'll take you to Sub Clause 4.9.2. Basically this system is implemented to ensure that the contractor is maintaining the required quality during the construction, as well as all the functional requirements are fulfilled. So if we go through the clause, it says, the contractor shall prepare and implement a compliance verification system to demonstrate that the design, materials, employer supplied materials, plant, work and workmanship comply in all respects with the contract. Further, this system should be prepared referring to employer's requirements, specifications, and regulations. So the contractor shall mention in this system how he's going to report the results of all inspections and tests carried out. You must have heard the term, NCR, non-compliances report which are issued when the contractor fails to comply with the expected quality. Also, in the event that any inspection or test identifies a non-compliance with the contract, sub-clause 7.5, defects and rejection shall apply. So next, we'll talk about the definition, contract. 
When you consider a construction contract, it doesn't mean only the contract agreement, there are a lot more to follow as shown here, letter of acceptance, letter of tender and addendums, these conditions which means conditions of contract, employer's requirement, contractor's design and price proposals, specifications, JV undertaking if it's applicable and other documents mentioned in contract agreement or LOA. So, a construction contract is a very vast area. Okay now let's talk about contract data. Contract data is part A of particular conditions. So it is actually some kind of link between general and particular conditions. When you go through general conditions clauses, you will find a number of places, as stated in the contract data. Which means certain sub-clauses in the general conditions require that specific information. So, you can find all the specific information relevant to the project under contract data, such as, employer's details, time for completion, advance payment percentage, retention amount percentage, and so on. Remember that contract data do not make any changes to the general conditions mentioned in FIDIC. If you want to change any of the sub-clauses in general conditions, you shall do it using particular conditions part B, special provisions. We'll talk about those separately. Next I'm gonna talk about contractor's documents, which means the documents prepared by the contractor is described in sub-clause 5.2, including calculations, digital files, computer programs and other software, drawings, manuals, models, specifications, and other documents of a technical nature, and if we go to sub-clause 5.2, it says contractor's documents shall comprise, as specified in the employer's requirements, required to satisfy all permits, permissions, licenses and other regulatory approvals, which are the contractor's responsibility under sub-clause 1.13 compliance with laws, and is described in sub-clause 5.6, as built records, and sub-clause 5.7, operation and maintenance manuals, so I want to show you something, in this document, most of the sub-clauses are connected to one or more sub-clauses. So you need to be thorough with all these conditions when you are working with contract-related matters. Then I will quickly talk about contractor's equipment. Make sure you always use the correct term equipment, not equipments. Contractor's equipment means all apparatus, equipment, machinery, construction plant, vehicles and other items required by the contractor for the execution of the works. Here I want to highlight the words, execution, and works. Works, clause number 1.1.89 means, permanent works and temporary works. So equipment are used for the execution of temporary and permanent works. But, anything that forms a part of permanent works, or anything that can be identified under temporary works, is not an equipment. Equipment are only used for execution of works. For example, if you have to supply a crane under the contract which you hand over to the client, then it's not a contractor's equipment. Okay then we'll talk about contractor's personnel. Contractor's personnel means the contractor's representative, who is the authorized person to be act on contractor's behalf, and all personnel whom the contractor utilizes on site or other places, such as a fabrication yard, where the works are being carried out, including the staff, labor and other employees of the contractor, and of each subcontractor, and any other personnel assisting the contractor in the execution of the works. So, contractor's personnel includes all the subcontractor's personnel as well. Then I will talk about cost. Cost means all expenditure including taxes, overheads, and similar charges excluding profit, reasonably incurred by the contractor in performing the contract. So any expenditure before entering the contract cannot be taken as a cost. So we talked about few definitions up to now. I don't want to make this video too long since it might be boring, and I wanted to give a brief about this book from this video. We'll talk about the remaining definitions and other clauses in the upcoming videos. I would like to request all of you who are new to the construction industry to have a look at FIDIC Yellow Book because it will be very helpful to you. So finally, please subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon to watch more videos like this and don't forget to give your feedback and any of your questions in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching this video.